the video just swapped, so that takes care of that. Now that I have found a new home, it is time for me to start my research. It will probably take me years, decades, maybe even centuries. The toll it will take does not matter. I'll make a device that will bring Luffy to his knees. Bulbry. Alright, so let's talk to Golrana. It seems like Luffy's not around here now. Let's talk to Golrana. You know, this place is just similar from Golbury's cave. Look, there are a couple of books lying around, Curfew Thethy. You should read them to see what needs to be done. Take a handwritten book with the annoying icon. I must dispel Garfield's illusions. If I succeed in creating red ice and nullify his illusions, I'll be able to bring Glowfree to his knees. And as history has proven where antic illusion devices exist, Glowfree is not does not remain. By dispelling the illusions that hide his home, I will take from him what he took from me. Illusion theory. Illusions need light to exist. From what Ilfine tells me, Glo there's probably going to be a lot of reading in this section, and I will voice all of it, although it will take a while. So if you this video is probably going to be mostly voicing from these things, so if you don't want to hear this, you might want to skip to the next one, but I'll probably put an annotation or something telling if it's the one or not. Illusions need light to exist. From what Ilfine tells me, Gloofy probably creates illusions by magically generating light and trapping them into the right shape. She has many long-distance conversations with Oaknox when he is researching the matter, and she knows a fair bit of Adam's research. Oaknox's device worked on the premise of breaking the magical bond that traps light in a particular shape, which is why it works from a certain distance and from underground. But its design was very complicated and involved the use of materials that I cannot get my hands on, such as glass. It also cannot be carried around. On one hand, I want to be the one pressing the fateful button that will reveal Gloofy's treason to the world and bring his house down. On the other, I would make no satisfaction unless I saw his despairing face as I did it. I will take a different approach. Instead of breaking the magic, I will cancel the light it holds. Light has very interesting properties. When crossing various beams of colored light, they collect together and the resulting light turns white. So by using a device emitting the right shade of light, I will mix th with the light from the illusion and temporarily dispel them. Such a device would be portable, I gather, and be able to ideal to sneak in without alarming the locals. Crystal singing. I talked to Ilfine of my anti-illusion idea. She thinks it might work. She gave me a light crystal and a few crystal seeds to start experimenting. She sang one of the seeds for me, and it turned into a perfectly circular crystal coin. That is, apparently, the first basic shape the crystal singers learn to sing when they start practicing. Then they move on to an array of other shapes. She told me how the most advanced singers can sing crystals into bowls, which, in turn, can sing the simplest of songs. She said that Oaknock used crystal coins, like this one, in construction of this vice, or were hand-painted to form a range of colors. Perhaps painting one of these will help me research colored light. Letia's seamstress has a fantastic range of dyes in her shop. I went to buy some, and when I came back, there was a crystal bow in my lap. Lithium was there. She smiled serenely and wished me a happy birthday. How I haven't lost track of time. I didn't realize I'd turned a hundred. How she knew this, I do not know. I sang my first coin using the bowl. Quite the exciting experience. The coin is circular and translucent. I shone a light through it. The light came out dimmed. This may become useful. Painting the coins with dye makes the colors quite dull and the beams faint. I don't think the color is quite bright enough to help with any illusion dispelling. I left the bow on the corner yesterday, and it partly filled with water dripping from the wall of night. Out of curiosity, I sang a coin with the bow in that state. The pitch was higher, and the coin I got out of it was a different shape. It was a triangle. When placed in front of the light, the triangle dimmed the light a fair bit less than the circle. I removed some of the content of the bowl and sang it again. The result looked almond-shaped. There seems to be a correlation between the filling of the bowl, the number of sides of the resulting shape, and how much the light dims when a light is shown through. I managed to color the coins by tar tar targeting a light crystal onto a prism splits the light into many colors, like a rainbow. Later, a beam of yellow colored light accidentally landed on the singing bowl. The bowl started glowing with the color of the beam, and when I tried singing a coin, my coin ended up yellow. Putting the coin in a beam of white light changed the color and brightness of the beam. I must experiment to see what happens when I combine various shapes and colors of coins. Though various combinations of colors and filling of the bowl, I managed to take, make 42 different types of colored coins. There are six possible shapes and seven possible colors. Putting two colored coins on top of each other and shining white light through them gave me an array of very dull, dark colors. However, shining a beam through two coins separately and crossing the resulting beams allowed me to create a very array of bright colors. I'm on the path to the solution! Hmm, I see. Chapter 3, page 2. One is red, two is orange, three is yellow, four is green, blue indigo violet, of course. Light in the rainbow comes in a range of colors, from red to violet, but illusions come in many more different colors. I saw with my very own eyes how Gloofy managed to disguise himself in a palette of colors, including a fresh shade, definitely not one of the colors of the rainbow. If illusions are made of light trapped in magic, they must be combining the shades of light, just like I have. I mentioned the theory to Ilfine. She went to rummage in one of the houses and came back with a faded colored coin. Elves used to use, used to use light and colors as a safety mechanism using a variety of colored crystals that brought from across the home world. They had very few of these crystals, and the majority were used in the Third Age, or so goes the story. This color wheel is reminiscent of, morning, of Morning's Ends Part 2, which was a hell of a quest to complete. The color wheel shows six colors. Opposing colors cancel each other out. 
of the six, three can be combined to make the others. These three are red, green, and blue. It's, pro it's probable these are combined via, ma via magic to create illusions. So in theory, by emitting the other three colors in the right intensities, illusions could become completely dispelled. So to confirm if the theories are correct, I intend to find I need to find an illusion and experiment on it. I won't know where to look. Wherever Glue Free is, he is hidden behind an illusion, but that's all I know. He's probably out there in the mountains, and I have no hope of knowing where. Ilthine comes to save her yet again. She convinced her little trash trackers to teach me all they know. That way I'll be able to spot things that don't feel right. Proof of Glue Free's doing an experiment there. I wouldn't have thought it would be so hard to make our tracker. The number of things you have to know and pay attention to is mind-boggling. It pains you to admit that some that gnome trackers are not quite as good. This may take me years. I've become so aware amount of, uh, I've become so aware of things around me it's untrue. If there are illusions about, I will know where they are, even if I don't know don't yet know if it's required to dispel them. Back from my expedition, I can tell that all those years of tracker training have paid off. I spotted a rock in the mountains that looked a little off. The shadow wasn't quite right. I reached for it and my hand vanished into it. It wasn't real! I crouched and felt the ground. It was quite nauseating to experience the difference between what I saw and what I felt. I touched something that felt like a pebble and picked it up. My hand appeared to hold a small pile of dirt, but it most fe definitely felt like it held a, held a pebble. Experimenting. I've tried focusing various intensities and colors of light on the pile. Focusing cyan, magenta, and yellow light beams at the dirt made the illusion waver. The light intensities are not quite right, and the beams are too focused to reveal the whole pebble. I need to disperse my colored lights to affect a larger area. Shining a light beam through the crystal that is flat on one side and pointy on the other disperses the light fairly evenly. Hmm, flat on one side, pointy on the other. Three of these, spreading the three colored beams, made the illusion waver, even from quite a distance, although moving the installation is quite an awkward thing to do. I should secure the system in a built device. Building the device. This seems very important. I have made a walking portable illusion device. The light intensities aren't quite right yet, but I can sort the calibration later. The blueprints wouldn't fit in these notes, so I've left them on the work table. The items required to make the device are as follows. Two long planks for the sides, two medium planks for the top and the bottom, six short planks to panel the front and the back, two strips of fabric for the straps, one light crystal for the light source, one long crystal for the cyan beam, one medium crystal for the magenta beam, one short crystal for the yellow beam, some rune glue to hold the lot. It's just a matter of following the blueprint. Calibration. I have tried all combinations of the right beam colors. It seems the quantities needed for each change every month or so. Oh, what made the pebble up here the other day wasn't there, doesn't anymore. I can't imagine taking countless crystal coins with me when I look for Abbasandra. The noise would give me away. Would Ilthine be able to help? Ilthine told, Ilthine told me she'd be able to do something about it. So if I gave her the pebble and some crystal coins, but I may have to wait a few year, for a few years. Ilthine just gave me a calibration box. A marvel of no much engineering if my eyes don't deceive me. Could it be? Oknok? No, he died before I was ex exiled. Eunuch? I was right! This is one of Eunuch's devices! Ilfine still has contacts east of the Galarpus Mountains, it seems, and she managed to get the pebble back there and got on a calibration device built on it. How extraordinary! Maybe I could start sending things back to my family in the Trinum village. Perhaps tell, even tell them I'm still alive. Maybe one day I can find a way to communicate remotely, remotely with them, if Ilfine can do it. The device records the intensity that is needed by each color of light to dispel the illusion and then outputs it. The two coins I need for each beam of my device should match the target color and intensity shown in each column of the calibration box. The output color is a combination of the color of the coins proportional to the number of their sides. For example, a combination of red circle and blue hexagon gives a mix of red and blue which contains six times more blue than red. Huh, so the amount number of sides shows the amount of intensity. The calibration device displays a color wheel per column. When I insert a couple of the coins, it displays their color on the edge of the wheel and draws a line between them on, the, on which the resulting color is marked. The position of that marker along the line depends on the quantity of each color in the mix. This should help me to see what colors I can combine to obtain the colors I need. Interestingly, if I put in two colors of, of coin on the opposite sides of the wheel, their combined color will edge towards white. The upward intensity of the combination depends on the color. Red is 1, violet is 7. And the number of sides. Circle is 1, hexagon is 6. Their product is the intensity of each coin. A yellow triangle would have an intensity of 9, 3 for the color multiplied by 3 for the number of sides. The intensity is a combination of coins. The, the intensity is a, of a combination the intensity of combination of coins is the sum of their individual individual intensities. The device doesn't show me my current intensity exactly. But if it is incorrect, it will show me an arrow pointing up if my guess is too low and down if my guess is too high. With this, the configuration will be pretty painless. Well, I can... <laughs> well, color mixing. I experimented with the calibration device to find out what the col combinations of coins gave the pure cyan, magenta, and yellow colors that I need. Here are the colors and ratios of, that give me the other colors. Pure cyan, equal quantities of blue and green. Pure magenta. Pure magenta. Equal quantities of red and blue, or three parts of red and four parts of indigo, or red and twice the quantity of violet. 
pure yellow, equal quantities of red and green, green and twice the quantity of orange, or any quantity of yellow. Once my machine is set, I can look for an entrance to Arposandra. After a century of learning, experimenting, and searching, I finally found it, the main entrance to Arposandra. Now I need to prepare myself to go in and take dispositions, in case I do not come back. Appendix shapes. Empty circle is one. Empty circle. One side. 20% is almond, 40% is triangle, 60% is square, 80% is pentagon, and full is hexagon. Colors. Alright, that's the entire thing. Well, that was a lot to read. Whew. Wow, if you guys managed to actually listen to all my voicing through that, then congratulations. I I don't know other people that I know. Uh, not everyone that I know would have that same amount of patience. Anyway, he said there's a blueprint somewhere around here. He said the blueprint is left on the table. Found a few memes that goes on the top. You take one place on the table. Hmm. He said the blueprints were on the work table. So I need to find that blueprint. I just... Oh, I thought I couldn't walk through the light for some reason. Build crate. Oh, that crate's right there. You don't have all the elements required to build a device. Place on the table. Search crate. Two and place them on the table. Do we need to just do this for each of them? It's kind of odd. I think I already have a light crystal and a long crystal. A uh, short crystal. Okay. Many memes as well. So you need to get to that part of the book in order to see the um, stuff that you need. What's in this crate? Minute crystal seed. Oh, I'll need that to build the thing. So nothing of interest. Got some planks. I got crystals. Search this crate. What do we find? Many rags. Two rags of the strap. Nothing of interest in there. Nothing of interest. Let's get this green glue. Okay, is there anything else I can search around here? And there's still no damn music! I mean, come on, you'd think there'd be a nice, like, a little working music for this spot, like there was in, um, in What's-His-Name's Cave. But no, apparently not. Have I gotten everything? Ah. I think that's everything. I don't? What am I missing? Let's search all these shelves in case. And all these crates and all these things. Crate... Crate. Crate. I don't have a light crystal, that's what I don't have. Looks useful. Let's rotate the prism and see if I can... Huh. Cool. But a prism only has three sides, doesn't it? I just want to get a light crystal. How hard is it to find a light crystal? Nothing of interest. Don't need more of these planks. Ah, it's elven lamp. I'll just take a light crystal from it. Oh. Damn. It's too tightly linked. Isn't there anything else I can do? I need to get a light crystal is the only thing I need, isn't it? I think. That's the only thing I have left. Yeah, a light crystal. I should assume I can find one around here somewhere. Well, I could just talk to Ilfine and ask for a light crystal. Hmm. This is proven to be a little annoying. Let's try the other one. Maybe that'll be a difference. Isn't like ah, good. That's the last thing. I got everything I need to build a to build a device. Man, talking like that has been for the so long with that other guy has gotten my voice to sound weird. Build using the blueprint. Build the device. Calibrate crate. Well. So, I am not 100% sure of what I need to do here, but I need to get more... I need to get some crystals first. I assume I'll be able to keep getting all these crystal seeds. I'm going to need a lot of crystal... Oh, I don't? Okay. So, what I need right now, if I'm going to calibrate the cr calibrate the device, I need... So the target color is pure cyan, target intensity is 27. Alright, 
So nothing else there is currently white. So if he said that cyan, appendix colors, so cyan was um, equal quantities of blue and green. And he said that the output intensity lies in the color, the number of sides. The intensity is the combination of the coins of the sum of their individual intensities. Hmm. So if I need cyan at an intensity of 27, cyan is intensity of 27. I need equal quantities of blue and green, and they need to add up to be 27. If green is 4 and blue is 5, 4 times 3 is 12. Alright, I need a green triangle and a blue triangle. So I need a green triangle, which means I need to have this fill the singing bowl to. That's 40%, isn't it? Green tinted and 40% full. That will make. That will make. Yes. A green triangle. Oh, let's get some more crystal seeds. I always like it to having more than just than I need, just in case. Clockwise. Seeing the glass. It's interesting how they decided to have the color, so you actually make the color glass. Anyway, now I should be able to put it in a green triangle, blue triangle, because... If I have that there, that'll make a um, green with an intensity of 12, because 3 times 4 is 12. Then if I add in a blue, it should add an intensity, it should make the equal quantities of it on its own, of, 14, of 12 and 15. Alright! 